as you practice working with Big O more and more, you begin to notice certain patterns. These lead to rules and algebra for manipulating Big O. Consider the following rules as being something like the analogs of the limit rules that we have recently looked at. Let's begin with a constant rule. And what this says is that big O of a constant C times a function F is the same thing as big O of F. Now, you got to be a little careful here. Let's make sure that that constant C is non-zero. But what this means is that big O of 5 times X is the same thing as big O of X. The constant doesn't matter. And that really makes sense. Is there a summation rule for big O? Yes, there is. And it ought to say something like big O of F plus G is big O of F plus big O of G. But we have to be a little bit careful because within big O, there's some absolute values that are floating around. And on the left, when I add F and G together, you better take the absolute values of those first. Otherwise, you could have some sort of nonsense statement like big O of X minus X equals big O of X plus big O of X. And that's not going to work. But as long as you're careful with your absolute values, you're totally fine. Finally, let's look at a product rule, which is very simple. It says that big O of F times G is big O of F times big O of G. No need to worry about absolute values. It's baked in. Now, these statements require a little bit of care as far as what we mean by an equal sign, because remember, these are classes of functions. Now, that statement, and indeed all of these rules, make a lot more sense when you look at them in the context of monomials or polynomials. So let's do that. This product rule, when you're looking at monomials, what it means is that big O of X to the M times big O of X to the N is really big O of X to the M plus N. That's a nice exponent rule. What does that summation rule look like? What it looks like is if we take big O of X to the M and add to it something in big O of X to the N, then what we get is in big O of X to the something, where that something is in the limit as X goes to zero, we get the minimum between M and N. Whereas if we work in the limit as X goes to infinity, we get the maximum between M and N. Now, wait, is this confusing? No, 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 no. We've seen this before. When you're in the limit as x goes to zero, it's the lowest order terms that matter. But when you're in the limit as x goes to infinity, it's the highest order terms that matter. This is the same pattern we've seen when doing limits. So now what we can do is put it all together and start working with some polynomials. Let's say we have a function of the form 3 minus 2x plus big O of x squared and we multiply it by something of the form 2x squared plus big O of x to the fourth. Let's be careful. We're working in the limit as x goes to zero. How do we expand and simplify this? Just do the usual polynomial multiplication and simplify using the above rules. So I'm going to just distribute this multiplication. Take the first term on the left, 3, multiply it by 2x squared, I get 6x squared. But then 3 times big O of x to the fourth is big O of x to the fourth. The next term, negative 2x times 2x squared, that's minus 4x cubed. Negative 2x times big O of x to the fourth is big O of x to the fifth. When I take that big O of x squared, distribute that, I get a big O of x to the fourth term and then a big O of x to the sixth. What I'm going to do is pull out the terms of lower degree, that's 6x squared minus 4x cubed, all those other big O terms. Since I'm in the limit as x goes to zero, it's the minimal power that dominates. That is big O of x to the fourth. If you find yourself getting lost, getting confused, not sure what to do, you can think of that big O of x to the n as an explicit monomial of the form some constant times x to the n. Work as if you're just doing normal polynomial multiplication. Everything will work out fine.
Okay, I think we're ready for a hard example. Let's simplify the following function. I have quantity 1 plus 2 times x to the minus 1 plus big O of x to the minus 2, all of that squared, times quantity x squared plus 5x plus big O of 1, all of that to the negative 1 half power. Let's be careful. This is in the limit as x goes to infinity. What happens? Well, the term on the left is going to 1, and the term on the right is going to, let's see, x squared to the negative 1 half. That's going to 0. So this whole function is going to 0 in the limit. But how quickly? That's what we need to figure out. So let's first of all square that first quantity on the left. So let's see, I get 1 squared is 1, and then twice 1 times 2x to the minus 1, that's 4x to the minus 1, and then all the other terms fit into a big O of x to the minus 2. All right, next up, we have to work with that second quantity, and the way I'm going to deal with that is I'm going to factor out an x squared from inside the parentheses. When I take that x squared out, I get x squared to the negative 1 half, that's x to the negative 1. What's left over is quantity 1 plus 5x to the minus 1 plus big O of x to the minus 2, all of that to the negative 1 half. Now, why did I do that? Oh, that's right. Now it's in the correct form for using the binomial series. I've got 1 plus some stuff that is going to 0 in the limit. And that stuff is 5x to the minus 1 plus big O of x to the minus 2. So carrying everything we had before, applying the binomial theorem, what this second term expands out to is 1, and then the power, negative 1 half, times 5x to the minus 1, that's negative 5 halves x to the minus 1, all the other terms are in big O of x to the minus 2. And now, finally, we've reduced this complicated expression to a collection of polynomials all multiplied together. I'm going to do that polynomial multiplication and simplify terms. From the leading order term on up, what do we have? We have 1 times x to the minus 1 times 1. That's x to the minus 1. Then the next term is going to be 4x to the minus 1 times x to the minus 1 times 1. That's 4x to the minus 2. Next, we have negative 5 halves x to the minus 2. All of the other terms, when I multiply this out, are going to be in big O of x to the minus 3. I can't get anything more specific because of my original uncertainty. And so with a little simplification, we see in the end we get x to the minus 1 plus 3 halves x to the minus 2, plus big O of x to the minus 3. Now, this is not an easy problem. You might have to go through this one again. This answer is not obvious from the beginning, but you can do it. You can do the algebra, and you can find out not only how quickly this function is going to zero as x goes to infinity, but how much uncertainty you have in how it goes to zero. You've got that big O of x to the minus 3 at the end. This is a very cool application of the big O algebra that we have learned.